Good Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. Today, we have an exciting development to discuss the launch of the very first political party focused solely on municipal affairs here in the city of Calgary. Now, it's called a Better Calgary Party, and it's ready to make a significant impact on the city of Calgary. The provincial government created legislation earlier this year, paving the way for political parties in the province of Alberta's two largest communities, Calgary and Edmonton. Bill 20, the Municipal Affairs Statutes Amendment Act, was tabled in the legislature in April and passed in May. Now, a better Calgary party aims to tell the story of what makes Calgary the best city to live, work, play, raise a family, and do business in, and how a municipal party can ensure the vision for generations to come. This, quote, Big Tent membership-driven organization, end quote, is dedicated to fostering community involvement and attracting individuals passionate about public service. John Horseman, a spokesperson for the party and a Ward 4 Calgarian resident, and fellow spokesperson Cheryl Munson, a Ward 7 Calgarian, officially kicked off the party's announcement at the Holiday Inn in South Calgary Wednesday night to a packed room of approximately 350 attendees, including one City of Calgary councillor, a former MLA, and a former Member of Parliament. Also in attendance were numerous candidates who ran in the previous 2021 municipal election. Here's a portion of the official launch of a better Calgary party. Oh, wow, what a room tonight. Thank you, Mike. Welcome, Calgary. It is my great honor and privilege to be one of the spokespeople for the A Better Calgary Party and to stand and welcome you all here tonight. I really believe this is the best city in the province, the country, and the world to live. And I want to do my part to make sure future generations benefit from what many of the incredible people in this room and in this city have built. I believe in this city, I believe in the people in it, and I believe that we can restore all that makes Calgary the best. Now we have an opportunity to come together and do just that. I also love the city and what it represents. I've lived in many places in my life, and I really, I wasn't born here, I'm another from Saskatchewan, but you know what? <laughs> I, uh, I got here as soon as I could. <laughs> And I've chosen to raise my family here and pursue my, my career in finance. Um, and in recent years, you know, what we've seen in the cities, things have started to change. And I think we're all here because of that. I think each of you has seen that. This is a wonderful crowd and we're really, really happy and delighted that you all came up here tonight with us. And what we've seen is that our city council is becoming increasingly out of touch with Calgarians. We've witnessed a decline in the very thing the municipal council is you know, tasked with doing, which is, we believe, fiscal responsibility and maintaining essential services. And we're all aware, you know, we are sitting here in the midst of a, a, a local emergency. Our, our main water line is actually broken. And this is, you know, this is a crisis. I, myself, have worked in, in, in many crises through, through time. Um, I know how to get through from one side to the other, but I also know, critically, leadership makes a difference. Who's calling the shots kind of drives a, a good or worse outcome. And that's kind of where we are today. When we reflect on municipal politics, we reflect on what is happening in terms of how we got here. You know, one of the problems is we believe it's a political process. Up till now, before a municipal party was you know, available for Calgarians, to be honest, most of our leaders were either chosen by other people, unions, business leaders, or self-appointed. The people of Calgary did not have an opportunity to you know, have a voice in that decision. We were asked to you know, show up at the ballot box, but we weren't given a voice in selecting those candidates, which is what we're, here, we're, we're about today. There is wisdom in people. There is wisdom in democracy. There is something that sits in the active people in, in the society that are willing to put their time and their attention into helping pick the best leaders to show up and represent us in City Council. And that's, part of, that's why we think a party is going to be important. We also think it's important that uh, not only when we pick the best leaders, we think it's important that there's a narrow field, that we have just the best candidates you know, sitting on that ballot. And that's, that's why we're here today. Uh, Calgary is a, it's a city of entrepreneurs, it's a city of innovators, risk takers. 
there, you know, this is one of the hardest working populations in Canada, if you look at the GDP numbers or, or anything along those lines. The city is built on waves of newcomers who came to this city, you know, largely because of the opportunity and the prosperity that was available for them to, you know, with their families and, and in their careers. And by doing so, contributed to the success of this city. The Calgary I know, and I truly believe this, is, is, is a meritocracy. And what do I mean by that? It means that it's not about who you know, it's not about what family you came from. If you show up and you have talent, you have an opportunity to earn your own success. You have an opportunity to kind of benefit from the value that you create. And nowhere I think in Canada can you do that except for here in Calgary. today and join this party because I want to unite with people who love this city as much as I do. I am a born and raised third generation Calgarian. And I love this city. I'm raising my kids here, I've run my business here, and I know that there is no place I would rather be. When I think about Calgary, the city I grew up in, what comes to mind is that <laughs> this was a small town in a big city. It felt like everybody knew everybody and they always had your back. That's what I remember. I remember being a safe, close-knit, big, small town. But I have noticed a shift. We're starting to lose some of that, that neighborly warmth and that community connection that reminds us all what it means to be a Calgarian. I believe that this political party can and will reinvigorate us. This, this gives us a common cause and a shared experience. I really believe that this is an opportunity to bring us together as Calgarians through participatory democracy. That's my favorite one. <laughs> so who is you know, a, a better Calgary party? Uh, you know, effectively, when we learned that <coughs> municipal parties would be allowed in the next election, a group, a large group of like-minded individuals came together from all across the political spectrum. And we, we spent some time looking at other, where political parties kind of operate in Montreal and Vancouver, and how they, you know, effectively play a role in, in, in the democratic process that, you know, I talked about earlier. And specifically about engaging Calgarians uh, differently and how a party can create the process and, and access to pick the leaders that used to be the domain of only a, a, a few people and how we can make a better Calgary through better leadership. We believe, starting today, the era of making, de making decisions for the many behind closed doors is over. Today, yeah, today we are making history. Um, you know, it's the first time in the history of Calgary that municipal party is being you know, on the table. And it's the first time that we have an opportunity for everybody in this room and also beyond to be a help, be, to help get out Calgary and so, you know, the Calgary elect the best candidates and, Cal and elect candidates that align with your values, you know, candidates that you know and trust. This is a chance to build something from the ground up. We aren't launching today with a predetermined selection of candidates, if you haven't noticed. We're not launching with a big war chest of, of financial sponsors. We're, we're launching today with you, because it starts with the people. It starts with each of you coming together. And we're, we are a center-right broad coalition that are looking to grow. Anybody can join us, anybody can be a part of it, just as long as you share our values and our principles. And today is really about building a better city. John Horseman chatted with us moments after the launch and said that the party was a party built for Calgarians wanting to get involved. John, thank you so much for doing this. Um, amazing turnout, roughly about 300 people in attendance. Yep good first launch for yourself I'm assuming right yeah fantastic we are we achieved everything that we wanted to achieve we wanted to launch a political party launch a, a broad-based coalition a member-based organization and we believe that it's the opportunity for the people of Calgary to have a voice in picking their leaders and we're so delighted that the people of Calgary agree now I, I just want to uh, ask you about that comment there about the people picking the their leaders that's what elections are for, aren't they? Are you saying that the previous elections have not been picked by the people of Calgary? So I'd, the, the way the elections have, have sort of worked is if you wanted to run for mayor or run a councillor, you just raise your hand 
and go. And so, yes, you have the opportunity to run. But when you get to the ballot box, my, 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 I'm, I'm active in politics, so I know a few things that's going on. Um, my poor wife comes to me and says, listen, there's 27 names on this ballot. I don't know any of them. And I don't know, I don't know what they believe in. I don't know if they're going to be good. I don't know if maybe they're going to be bad. It's not fair. And so I don't think that is a good way to ask the people of Calgary to make a decision. I think a vetting process that narrows the field, that's transparent to the voters, you know, by engaged citizens of Calgary and a, and a more limited list with the transparency that we're offering, I think it's a better outcome. Now, you laid out your timeline in the speech that you gave this morning, this afternoon, with your co-host, co-sponsor, co-speaker, co-spokesperson. This is a large task because you have a convention that you want by October to potentially start picking candidates, start picking, potentially laying out policy. Do you think you can do it with the crowd that you saw today? Absolutely. We, um, with the volunteers and the engagement of Calgarians, we can do this for sure. If there's only 10 people that came out today, I'd probably be worried. Now, policy is going to be a big thing that a lot of parties, like your, the, the better, a better Calgary party is going to have to be working on. How is that going to work? Because you talk about the members selecting the candidates. Or will they have a voice in the policy as well? No, we think the way that um, municipal council is structured, it's not a Westminster parliamentary system. And as such... Um, we think it's going to be more freedom and autonomy for the candidates to pick the policies, to choose the policies that they want to run on. And the members, uh, we just don't think that's, we don't think it's effective to actually in the, at this level. To be honest, municipal council should be fiscally responsible, provide essential services. There shouldn't be a ton of ideology involved. It's really a highly functional role that about delivering, you know, really value to the citizens of Calgary. So I don't think a big policy uh, network or convention is actually necessary to actually get those outcomes. Now, one of the big things about one of the big things about this uh, city is it's very diverse. We have the Northeast, which is very immigrant, new Canadian uh, population, and then the Southeast, very established communities. How does a better Calgary party reach out and connect with a more diverse population than potentially 20, 15, 20, 30 years ago? Yeah, no, it's a great question. So that's, we believe member-driven ward or associations that are representative of the, you know, representative of the community that they operate in and, and the volunteers come from that community is the best way to answer that question. They will pick amongst themselves the best candidate, you know, to represent them and they will assure that their, their issues are known by that candidate as well. And so we think that's the best way to solve that problem. I don't think you can go to downtown Calgary and make a call on what the Northeast needs and do it correctly. I think the Northeast knows what they need and I think they may need to make that own call, their own call. One of the last things that you did talk about in your speech was this party will not have a whip. There will be no uh, party leader, but there will be candidates, uh, councillors and uh, mayor. How do you ensure that the people you select or the people select hold those values that you want for your candidates in the potential next sitting of the uh, Calgary Council? Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good question. First off, we believe that, you know, as a, just as a simple example, you know, maybe the councillors shouldn't all sit in the city hall all the time. Maybe they should actually take an office in their ward and potentially be a representative and understand what the needs of their community are. And I'm not saying that they're not listening or what have you, but there's something very symbolic about just locating your, a, a counselor kind of in that ward. We expect them to work together, but if the needs of that ward, you know, are such that, you know, it's, you know, it doesn't work with the needs of other wards, like we expect those counselors to vote in the best interest of both what they think the city's needs are and their constituency needs. Um, I trust people. I trust these people. They are currently operating very, you know, independently. Um, I don't think they need to be told what to do. Honestly, there's no backbenchers. They are 100% voting um, with their beliefs every single day. So I think they should have the right to their own policies. So my last question for you before I let you go here, John. What would you want Can a Calgarians to know about this party that you weren't able to talk about here or I haven't asked you or the media hasn't asked you yet? Just get involved. This is the first opportunity that we have had to pick our leaders and pick our candidates. And if you don't take that opportunity, that's on us. That's on you.
Thank you so much, John. For Cheryl Munson, she said that the turnout is a great first step. Let's just have a conversation. Yeah, exactly, and that's all it is. Cheryl, thank you so much for doing this. Yes, we're recording. Um, first off, I just want to ask for you, what does it mean to see such a large crowd, such a diverse crowd from pe- people from all across the city come together and launch this new political party? It means that we're on track, that we're feeling the same thing everybody else is feeling. And what is that? What are people feeling right now? Uh, frustration and isolation, I think, from city hall politics. How do you mean? What do you mean by that? Because one of the big round of applause that uh, was spoken was uh, the Olympian who said the housing, parking on the street, like you said, p- the councils aren't listening. How do you ensure that your new political party will listen to the average Calgarian? Well, the candidates are going to be chosen based on principles and values. And if they're not doing their job, the membership is going to hold them accountable. And what are the values that you have in the Better Calgary Party? The values that are most important to me is accountability, accessibility, and transparency. And how do you be more accessible? Because people can call their elected official now. So how does it... They can call, but they don't necessarily get a response, right? I've emailed a few times. My counselor is actually pretty good about responding and having debates with me. um, But I know a lot of them aren't. So... So we are now about a month, a year and a bit from the next general election. The work doesn't stop tomorrow. You've officially launched. What does the organization, well, I should say now the party do tomorrow to ensure that the work that has happened today, the turnout that happened, continues forward? We keep up the momentum. We get the word out on social media. We get the word out with you guys. We we talk to Calgarians. Uh, They're on the same page as we are. I mean, we're all just regular Calgarians, ordinary, everyday Calgarians. So we know that they are feeling the same things as us. So we let them know how they can get in touch with us, how they can volunteer, how they can get a membership, and how they can help donate. And in the news release, it said that this party is going to be a big tent party. What does that mean? I'm assuming you're willing to have talk to people from the NDP, the Liberal, the Conservatives, or who, what does a big tent mean to the Better Calgary Party? It means that we're breaking it down instead of having labels of left, right, conservative, uh, left wing. It's We're doing it based on values and principles. And that requires a conversation sometimes. But I, I believe that Calgarians are more united than City Hall likes to think we are. I think we have the majority of Calgarians who, who value transparency, who value accountability, fiscal responsibility, and getting back to City Hall staying in their lane and doing the jobs that they are supposed to do. Filling the potholes, fixing the water, right? And I think that's how we rally Calgarians. Okay, so you said something that I, I, I talked to a lot of municipal leaders, so staying in your lane. So we just had Bill 20, Bill 21, Bill 18 introduced by the provincial government, which the municipality is saying, stay in your lane, the province will look after. What are the things that you have seen in the last three years since this new council has been elected that hasn't been in the lane of a municipal jurisdiction? <laughs> John, you want to come in and take that? John, come in to help me take this question. I'm sorry, it's just you. No, it it is. It's it's true. But I think when you start out with an $87 billion climate change agenda, I think that's out of your lane as a city. We want our potholes fixed. We want our water to be secure. It shouldn't be something we have to worry about. Those are, we want to have safe streets. These are things that the city is in charge of, and that's what we want them to focus on. Last question. I asked this to John as well, but I'm going to ask it to you. What's the one thing you want Calgarians to know about this party that we haven't talked about, that the other media hasn't asked you, that you want people to know? This party is about the heart of Calgary. That's what we are. We, we, want, to, we want to get back to showcasing the heart of what this city is and what it's always been and what it can be moving forward. Thanks so much for tuning in for another great episode of Municipal Affairs. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button now, wherever you're listening to this or if you're watching this on YouTube. 
make sure you hit that subscribe button. You won't want to miss all the great content that we have coming up over the next few months and into September. We have a big announcement that we're going to be releasing here at the end of June. So please tune in and make sure you are aware of it because you will not want to miss our great new series that we're going to be launching in September of 2025. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find this work page link on the Cross Border Interviews website or in the show notes today. We want to thank all of our great new sponsors that have donated to the show over the last month and a half. If you want to see the full list of ongoing supporters of the Cross Border Network, head over to the Cross Border Interviews website today and join them. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.